Hi, my name is Matt Kendricks. I am the project founder for DCIP Router. Uh, many of you know that the FCC deadline for stir shaking compliance is coming up on June 30th, 2022. So let's jump into how do you can leverage DCIP Router with the TransNexus module to enable your free PBX environment to be able to become stir shaken compliant. So let's go. So let's review the problem space first, right? So the core problem space is that you've been using FreePBX for a number of years. You've spent up uh, a number of FreePBX servers probably to handle different clients. Uh, now what's happening is that uh, uh, about three years ago, they came up with the standard stir shaking. Um, all of the upstream or most of the upstream VoIP providers are stir and shaking compliant. Uh, the FCC wants us to become, uh, when I say us, the small voice service providers to become compliant um, by June 30th. So you have all of these boxes out here. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can become compliant, um, but you have a number of servers out here. The best way to do this is to, um, is to actually have a central uh, system that will actually do the signing of your calls. Uh, instead of actually managing the certificates and all the complexities of this, I, uh, I highly uh, recommend TransNexus Clear IP Service. Um, they will basically handle all of the, uh, the uh, complicated uh, components of, uh, of signing a certificate and even if you wanted to verify it as well. We don't support verif verification in the TransNexus module currently. Uh, we only actually do authentication which is the most important part for the June um, 30th uh, deadline. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's walk through this a little bit. So in the uh, DCIP router UI, you need to enable the module first. Uh, once you enable it, uh, you'll need to put in a license key. Uh, this is a paid module. Um, and if you don't have a license to that uh, module, you can actually click the buy license module on the UI. Then you need to go into TransNexus. This is assuming you already set up a TransNexus account. You need to specify the IP address of the, um, of the DCIP router instance. And you'll see here, this is the DCIP router instance IP that we have configured. Um, this allows the DCIP router instance to be able to communicate with TransNexus. Note, um, we already handled this for you, but TransNexus only communicates uh, leveraging TCP. Um, so um, if you try and send packets to it with UDP, it, it will not work. Um, so this is the call flow that we're going to look at in a second. Basically, a call comes inbound. What happens is that the call is actually sent over to TransNexus uh, services. Uh, it comes back as a 302. Uh, and then that 302 actually is what contains the actual um, SIP header itself. Uh, so, I'm sorry, not the SIP header, but the identity header uh, that we'll need in order to send to our carrier to actually be stir shaking compliant. So let's just jump out of here and let's go to the DSIP router uh, UI. So I have uh, a couple things, right? So if you have never set up DSIP router real quickly, you'll just need to set up a carrier group. I, I am using FlowRoute, been using FlowRoute for many years. Uh, I have this set up. Here goes my tech prefix. For those who use FlowRoute, you know what that means. That's your account number. So basically, I just have uh, one um, SIP Edge server here for FlowRoute configured. I also have uh, an outbound route. My default outbound route is FlowRoute. So that um, carrier group that I set up is it's, uh, it's being used as the default. So any traffic that comes in the DSIP router will go out of that particular carrier. Uh, and then uh, we'll go over to endpoint groups. So if you wanted to test this really quickly and you don't want to actually have to, you don't have a free PBX server for some reason, or you just want to test that calls are going outbound, you can just register your, the IP address of your, uh, your SIP phone. So I just, you know, you can go into endpoints and you can specify the IP address of your, um, your SIP phone. And then from there, you can start sending calls out that way. The, uh, the, the way that we're going to leverage it is that uh, we're going to use a free PBX server. So I, I'm using IP off. Um, I specify the uh, host name 
of the uh, free PBX server that I want to uh, to receive traffic from. Also, this could be used also if I wanted to be able to send inbound traffic to it. But in this case, we're focused on just sending outbound traffic. Okay. Um, so this is this is the server here, um, and uh, in our free PBX server. I have a trunk here, and this trunk is called DSIP. And the only thing I've added to, to this trunk is really a uh, trunk name. And um, I have the SIP server IP address, which is here, dot .178. If you look here, this is dot .178, right? So this free project server will send traffic there. And, and you know, just for completeness, I'll show you the outbound route. Uh, outbound route just has a caller ID associated with it, and then it specifies that trunk, right? So simple free PBX stuff. If you've been using free PBX for a while, you know what this what this all means. So let's go ahead and now let's draw. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, look at SN grep on this server. I'm going to uh, initiate a uh, a phone call here on my Zoipier phone. All right, we see a call invite. So, so let's see what happened here. So let me go ahead and kill this call. All right, so what we're seeing here is uh, invite came through. Uh, and let's just take a look at this invite. I am calling our office phone number. And uh, what happens, it goes over to uh, clear IP, which is this IP here. Let's take a look here. Uh, so here goes the clear IP server that I'm sending traffic to. Uh, there is, uh, you can see there's the transport of TCP and I'm just sending over, um, you know, the from and, and to number here. Uh, it does a try and move temporarily. This comes back from uh, clear IP. This is the identity header here. And then what happens here is that, um, when it comes back, we actually copy the identity header um, from that uh, redirect, and then we put it in an invite, and this invite is going off to, to flow route. So that's really all that needs to happen in order for um, you know, support stir and shaking. And what you're gonna do is basically go to all of your uh, free PBX systems and uh, make that change on the uh, on the trunk most likely, so that all of the um, you know the trunks on your FreePBX servers point to DSIP router. And again, you'll be making that change from a carrier perspective on DSIP router, so all the calls go through um, through the carrier, do uh, do DSIP router out to the carrier. Uh, and then likewise, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted all the traffic to come back inbound from from your carrier, you can point it to DSIP router. But if you're not concerned about that, you can keep all of the outbound um, traffic going directly to your free PBX servers so that you don't have to, you can minimize the amount of changes that you have to do, okay? So, all right, well, great. This is a quick video just to explain how you could quickly uh, enable stir and shaking for your free PBX environment. Okay, have a great one.